welcome to The Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. Unshaded walls are one of the greatest sources of unwanted heat in a home. This week I'll be speaking with Steve King, who's going to explain the ins and outs of orientation and passive shading, and how to get rid of that unwanted heat in your home. And later in Australian style, I'll be speaking with Dana Meadows, who's turned a 1960s Fibro Beach Shack into an entertainer's delight. I'm here today with Steve King. He's a, a veteran architect and a, a senior lecturer at the University of, Sydney, of New South Wales. Yeah. Thank you for being with us, Steve. No problem. Okay, so we're talking today about passive shading. What, in a nutshell, is passive shading? and what are, without getting technical at the moment, but, and what are the actual benefits of, of passive shading? Okay, we, we, here in Australia we have a range of climates, but almost all climates have an overheated period, even Hobart and, and certainly Canberra, which are the coldest cities that we have. During those overheated periods, the last thing you want is sun coming in through your windows and adding to the heat loads on, on your house. Now, everybody knows this. We have simple ways of, of reducing that sun coming in, internal blinds, even external blinds. And you, one should never dismiss those as sun control devices. They're passive shading devices, even inside blinds are, okay? Main thing wrong with inside blinds, by the way, are they interfere with your ventilation. So typically we talk about trying to get your shading done on the outside. It's more effective than trying to get it done on the inside. The simplest shading methods are appropriately sized eaves on your house that let in sun, especially from the north, that let in sun in the winter, but they keep out the higher sun in the summer. That's the bottom line. But of course your house has other orientations and windows on other orientations as well, where it's not quite so simple. The sun might be much lower in the sky in summer, uh, say on the western orientation. You can't have ordinary little eaves do the job for you then. You have to do things like pergolas that stretch out a lot further from the wall uh, and give you deeper shade uh, and are dimensioned for the particular geometry of the sun at that orientation, if you like. Now, those ways of getting passive shading can also do other jobs, and that's what makes it so attractive. A pergola can give you a sheltered outdoor deck for alfresco dining or <laughs> outdoor living. It's when you start to think about these things together. You know, it does it a job shading, keeping the sun out, taking that extra heat load off the interior, keeping the place cooler later into the day so that you've got to do a lot less cooling for the evening and before you go to bed. Yeah. That's the big advantages, okay? Okay, and how, do you, and how do you calculate the ideal shading for your home? Okay, now that, that does involve a little bit of, uh, of, of geometry and, and looking it up and, and, and whatever. Um, typically, for instance, in Sydney, uh, to get effective shading for a full height uh, bit of glazing, a sliding door or whatever, uh, you need at least 600 millimetres overhang on a northern facade. But I stress that that 600 millimetres has to be in the, like an eave, continuous, because if you only put it over the door, <laughs> then the sun will spend more time shining in under your overhang from yeah. the east and west than it does shining directly on it and being kept out by the canopy. So um, there is no alternative. Oh, look, the best way, to be honest, this might sound terrible, uh, terribly um, ambitious for some people, download a free copy of a program called SketchUp and it's got a learning curve like that. Everybody can learn to use it to box up a little uh, a model of your building. It's got a wonderful uh, uh, capability of locating it exactly where your house is and then you can play with the shadows from the sun but with little sliders and you can see if I tease my overhang out a little bit more it hits, kisses the bottom of the glazing mm -hmm. at the times when it, you know, January, February, March, when uh, I've got the problem with the, the sun coming in that window. Anybody can, if, if you can't do it, get your kids to do it, okay? <laughs> because that is by far the best way of answering the question that you asked me. You've got to get the geometry right for the particular orientation mm -hmm. of the window. If you don't, then a lot of the effort is wasted. To All right. 
And what are the shading goals for different climate zones throughout Australia? Is it in, in Cairns you have to keep the shade, yeah, you've got to keep the sun off the, all the walls all day? Basically, it's, a, it's almost as simple as that. If you have a climate that is overheated all year, and the tropics are, then, to be honest, it's easiest to talk about, a ha about houses with verandas that really do make the effort to shade both the glazing and the walls. Okay, and especially the east and west walls, because there you get the heavy uh, heat loads. When you get into the subtropics, you've got to be a little, like Brisbane, uh, you've got to be a little bit more careful, because a little bit of sun does have its benefits, but in winter. Um, but really that becomes relatively easy. Mm -hmm. uh, and also, again, if you have a little bit too much shading, it's not a tragedy compared to... The, so the cooling that you save is still going to be more than the heating that, that you have to put in to compensate for it. And you can spend more time uh, outdoors in the sun anyway. When you get into the temperate climates like Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, Adelaide, uh, you're really balancing the two very carefully. And if you look at only the technical literature, um, it has tended to suggest that uh, in places like Melbourne, leaving the eaves off could even have benefits because you get more free solar heating in yeah. winter than the cooling that you have to do in summer. And do you agree with that point? No, honestly, I don't. Because uh, cooling is harder to do than heating. And it's harder to achieve altogether. With, with Passive heating, it's easier to kind of follow the sun around your house a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, with cooling, you really have to be more careful. And therefore, in the end, uh, the economy is false. Look, I'll, at the risk of a little aside, um, eaves do more jobs than just shading. They're what I call my first line of defense in, uh, in house construction and in shelter as well. They keep the rain off your walls, they allow you to keep your windows open uh, when it's raining so that you still get natural ventilation. Um, they make the construction of the top of the wall so much simpler and so much more long lasting. You know, If you try to build without eaves, with parapets and with walls coming in behind them, you've got several points of potential failure that if the skills in the building aren't quite up to it, you know, any one of those can fail. With eaves, most of the time, you're safe. So eaves are things that you would do even if the technical simulations tell you that you'll save a few dollars mm -hmm. in heating, uh, but you have to spend a few more dollars in cooling, but actually you're ahead with the heating. Okay. It's not as simple as that. All right, Steve. And the, the people who are viewing this show, the, who it's relevant to, are people who already have an existing home. Ah, okay. So they've either, got, they've either got eaves or they don't have eaves. So the mm. ones that do have eaves, what can they do to... Um, assess their, their existing eaves, right. that they're actually being as effective as, they, sh as they, they could be? They're in the best of all positions because they can actually just go outside and look, yeah. right? I mean, you've got to be a bit systematic about it. You've got to just watch when you're getting sun in, uh, mm -hmm. which is uncomfortable, through which windows, and when the eaves are doing their, their job on other walls. And if they need some adjustment, what can hey, they do? You've got lots of options. One of them is that you might have too much sun coming in through a bunch of sliding doors which are facing the wrong way and your eaves are just not big enough to do the job. That might be a perfect place to put a pergola on and a deck to take advantage of it and you mm -hmm. get your extended sun shading and you get value for your outdoor living. Well, here's here with Dana Meadows. She's the principal of Dana Meadows Architecture in Victoria. Thanks for being with us, Dana. Pleasure. So today we're talking about the Milne Court House, which is a, a renovation of a, of a traditional fibre um, fibre beach house in Point Lonsdale in Victoria. Tell us, Dana, what was the what was the brief from the client, and what, what were they looking for for this in this renovation? Basically, they spend a month and a half to two months down the beach over summer and, and weekends, and they already had a fairly old shack there, and they wanted to turn it into a a beach house that would take them through the years. They've got um, three young children that are heading towards their teenage years and they really wanted a house that they could entertain in because they entertain a lot and they could divide up the children's areas to the adults' areas. Great. And in, in the description that I've, re I've read, Donna, it says this house really makes the most of its close proximity to the beach. Could you um, elaborate on that a little bit? Yeah, it does. Look, it's got a, a rooftop... Um, Let's, 
let's call it for better terms, uh, beer deck, <laughs> which is where uh, Dad likes to go with his mates and gets a great view of the uh, Point Lonsdale Back Beach. Uh, it uses, you know, it uses all the passive solar uh, requirements that it's needed to. Uses the north light. Uh, it has a tennis court to the rear of it, and um, we've used that area as a great spot to create a decking with pizza oven and, and spa. So it's worked out really well. Right, fantastic. And you've used, uh, you've used a number of Skyline products throughout the project. Can you explain um, what products you used and why you went with a variety rather than just the one product? Sure, yeah. Uh, on the garage, the new front section of the house, we used the matrix cladding, which um, has exposed joints and uh, just created a bit of a different look to the front facade of the house. Um, as you walk down, there's a, a garage storage area and, and an outdoor shower. You go through the, uh, the timber fencing to the next section, which was the original house, which we've kept the, basically the stud work and the slab off. Now, we've clad that in uh, the linear boards to just create um, a bit of a traditional sort of feel to that area. And then there's a new section on the back, which is the adult's entertaining area and their bedrooms, which has been clad in a vertical Axon 133 board. And they're all really chosen for the fact that, you know, maintenance-wise, they're fantastic. Um, this is a beach house. These people don't want to be spending their time maintaining it. They just want to come down and enjoy it. All right. Great. Thanks, Dana. And, and what, was your, what was your goal around the new addition to the renovation? Were you, were you trying to um, achieve a seamless transition from old to new, or were you trying to create a, a contrast? Pretty much trying to, trying to make it clear that, you know, there was an existing building. Uh, here's the new section at the back. Here's the new section at the front. Uh, the great thing about the Skyline product is that you can use different profiles, if you like, or products, but it still has the same feel. You know, we wanted it to still feel like a beach shack, not a two-storey brand new house yeah. um, and, and that was the point in using those products which are great for maintenance and okay. produce and, a combined feel. Great and, and how do you think this, this home pays homage to the traditional beach shack? Oh I think it's fantastic I mean you know you, you walk in the first thing you see is wetsuits hanging over the fence, <laughs> um, surfboards get loaded into the, into the storage area, uh, the decking, pizza oven, the spa I mean it's all it's all just echoing <laughs> a great entertaining house and, and uh, you know, they're not worried about walking in with sandy feet. They've got um, beautiful oak boards throughout. Right. It's, uh, it's worked out really well. Dana Meadows, thank you for your time. Pleasure.